Usually, when a murder occurs, the first piece of information we receive is the discovery of the victim's body. From that point on, the police begin their investigation and try to determine what happened and who committed the crime. But not this time? In this case, the typical scenario was disrupted when the victim discovered their assailant long before he went on to commit the crime. This story happened quite recently, in early May 2022, in the city of Pileon in the Norte de Santander department, one of the 32 departments of Colombia. In this city, lived a 16-year-old girl named Ana Karina Blanco Duran. She was the oldest of three children in a modest family, much like many others in the region. However, this did not reflect on Karina's character or dreams. She was studying in the 11th grade and eagerly awaiting her graduation. Her relatives and friends describe Karina as disciplined and determined, yet very cheerful, sociable, and full of hopes. However, like most teenagers, she was plagued by doubts. She expressed her thoughts in a letter she wrote as a school assignment two weeks prior. In the letter, the girl wrote that, like everyone else, she had goals she wanted to achieve. However, at the moment, she was focused on being happy, studying, and helping her mother, whom she described as a beautiful, strong, and resilient woman who had a tremendous influence on her. The following year, the girl planned to pursue higher education at a university, where she intended to study psychology or philosophy. This would allow her to fulfill her dreams, with the main one being to buy a house for her mother. At the same time, Karina admitted to overwhelming fears and doubts. She wrote that she was afraid of growing up and facing the big world on her own. Several times, she had the desire to turn back time and play with dolls again, something she didn't have the opportunity to do in her childhood because she had to grow up quickly and help her parents. In the last sentence, almost prophetically, Karina provided an explanation for what would happen to her in two weeks. She wrote that she feared human evil, and she was not mistaken. Because what she was so afraid of ultimately shattered her dreams. On May 3, 2022, as usual, Karina woke up very early. She lived in the village of La Viga in the municipality of Kashra. It was a relatively remote village from the school, so every day Karina had to walk for at least an hour along several country roads to reach the bus stop that would take her to school. The morning went by as usual. The student woke up, had breakfast, said goodbye to her family, and left the house at 5.30 am however, a few minutes after Karina left, her father started receiving messages from her. It was unusual. Karina wrote to her father that while she was walking along the country roads, she noticed that someone was following her. It was a man who was getting very close to her. Whenever the girl picked up her pace, the stranger did the same. If she tried to take a different path, he would follow her. Naturally, Karina felt uncomfortable and sensed danger. She mustered the courage to discreetly take a photo of the stranger and sent it to her father so he would know who was pursuing her. Karina's father, Cesar Blanco, became extremely worried for his daughter's safety. He hurried out of the house to follow the same route to the bus stop that she took. However, he couldn't find her anywhere. The man assumed that the danger had passed and that Karina had safely boarded the bus. Unfortunately, that was not the case. The school later informed her parents that Karina had not attended classes that day. The parents reported Karina's disappearance to the police. Since it was a tiny village where most people knew each other, news of the incident spread quickly among the local residents. The girl's family distributed a photo of the stranger who had been following her in the morning. Just a few hours later, a man who worked at a local farm mentioned another farm worker who closely resembled the man in the photo. Despite the blurry image, he felt that he recognized him. Additionally, that worker happened to be late for work on the same day. Armed with this information, Several villagers and relatives of Karina went to the farm where these men worked and demanded answers from the person who was likely photographed by Karina. The individual turned out to be a 55-year-old man named Alexander Cayo, originally from Venezuela. 
He had arrived in the town four months prior and was staying with a relative. Alexander had found employment at the farm where he was located. The people were furious about the schoolgirl's disappearance, and behaved aggressively. Eventually, he confessed to assaulting Karina, killing her, and disposing of her body in the Kashra River. It's easy to imagine that the villagers, especially Karina's relatives, wanted to take matters into their own hands after such a confession. However, the police arrived just in time. The officers apprehended the suspect, thereby saving him from the angry mob. The police took Alexander Carrillo to the station and began the interrogation. He repeated what he had already told the villagers. He confessed to killing the schoolgirl and revealed where he had disposed of her body. After committing the crime, he cleaned himself up, changed his blood-stained clothes for clean ones, and went to work. The man sincerely believed that he would never be found, unaware that the victim had taken a photo of him. While the interrogation was ongoing, villagers gathered near the station. They were angry and wanted to take justice into their own hands. Concerned for the man's safety, as they believed his life was in danger, the police decided to transport him to another location. They escorted the suspect out of the station and attempted to put him in the car when the crowd started to act. They dragged Carrillo out of the vehicle and attacked him. There were too many of them for the police to intervene. The mob beat the perpetrator with sticks and stones until someone attacked him with a knife, delivering a fatal blow. Even after that, the crowd did not disperse and prevented the police from approaching until they were convinced that the man had died. Karina's body was found on the riverbank exactly where her assailant had indicated. Her bag was nearby. The girl was partially undressed, and the autopsy confirmed that she had been sexually assaulted. She died from two penetrating wounds to the chest and neck. According to the police, Alexander Carrillo had been observing Karina for several days, encountering her each morning as she walked to school while he went to work. This version is supported by the fact that a few days before the attack, Karina had told her school friends that she was being followed by a stranger, which made her extremely uncomfortable. The police have stated that the investigation will not be terminated at this point. They will examine the actions of the local police officers who allowed the lynching of the man, and they also want to determine who initiated the attack and delivered the fatal blow. According to local media reports, it was a relative of Karina, but the individual's name has not been disclosed. Pain and outrage swept through the city. At Karina's school, an event was organized not only to honor her memory but also to protest against the killing of women. Students and teachers wrote an open letter expressing their outrage at the current state of affairs, she wasn't drunk, she wasn't dressed provocatively, she wasn't at a bar. Like every other weekday, she was walking to school, wearing rubber boots because she lived on a farm. And she had to endure hardships, like many boys and girls in the country, to receive an education. She was afraid that someone was following her. She was just 16, terrified. Her dreams, desires, and life were taken away from her. After Karina's voice was silenced, all that remains are the voices of those of us who demand a safer environment, and normal families where children are taught not to hit, violate, or kill each other. Karina's killer didn't see her as a person with her own life, dreams, and loving family, and the villagers decided to repay him in kind. Lynching is unacceptable to many, and it has no place in a civilized society. However, for many others, it is simply a reflection of the lack of trust in the justice system. They are dissatisfied with the prosperity of impunity and the fact that the criminal will never face the most severe punishment, the most serious punishments will never be carried out. In their opinion, the police are not doing their job, so they have decided to take action to change the situation. It is heartbreaking to see girls who go off to school and never return home, becoming victims of murder. But in this case, Karina became the person who exposed the criminal. Karina didn't behave recklessly, she immediately sensed the danger emanating from the persistent stranger. Secretly taking his picture and sending it to her father, 
she allowed him to be captured before he could harm another innocent girl. Unfortunately, it was already too late for her. But without that photograph, the police could have spent days, months, even years without finding the killer.